It is 11 p.m. on a Saturday night, 11.30 p.m. We're gonna be flying about 3,000 miles to Oshkosh from Alaska starting tomorrow. It takes a whole bunch of preparation, and so we're gonna show you the gear it takes to get there. Hey everybody, Chris Palmer here from Angle of Attack. We're going to be flying 2-3 Uniform down to Oshkosh to get some big panel upgrades done. It's going to turn the plane in the IFR, increase the capability of our flight school. It is the end of February, beginning of March when we're going to be making this journey. And it's obviously winter time. We're going to be going from Alaska through the Canadian Rockies, down through Alberta, and then the northern uh, lower 48. So this is quite the trip. Uh, it's something we take very seriously from a safety standpoint. The what ifs, just in case we can't land where we want to land land or there's some sort of emergency landing. So we're going to, to show you some of the things, the considerations, the tools that we're going to be taking with us on this journey. So here we go. Let's jump right in. We're going to start with Daniel. He's going to be my co-pilot for this flight and he's going to take you through some of the survival gear that we're taking with us and the other, you know, tools, things that we have. Hey, I'm Daniel. I'm going to be uh, doing this epic flight with uh, Chris Palmer here. We got laid out here as some of uh, the stuff that we're going to be bringing. Obviously, we've got limited space in the aircraft and limited weight, so we've got to really be thoughtful about what we're bringing. So uh, right over here, we've got um, this is a pretty comprehensive kind of survival gear here. This is um, it's got everything to kind of survive for 72 hours. So we've got medical kits, uh, we've got flashlights, fire starters, that kind of thing. Uh, we've got some food, which we only want to eat in an emergency. It's not very tasty, but it'll get us, keep us alive. And then a bunch of tools and different things for warmth. So we've got that as kind of a basis. It's pretty comprehensive. We also have some food here. So we're bringing some, some dehydrated food that we can just pour hot water in. Uh, we've got a jet boil here, our, our water, and we're going to keep some uh, boiling water in a thermos here as well, so it's ready to go. We can probably even kind of pour it in in flight so we can eat while we're going, so we can kind of make the best of time. Bunch of snacks here. One thing I'd like to point out is we've got this ammo can here. Um, in it, we have a couple different things here. We've got a, a simple preheater we can use kind of in an emergency or if we get stuck out here. We can actually use av gas from the airplane uh, to heat a little burner and then this will come out the top and we'll put the uh, hose in and put it into the aircraft to kind of warm it. We'll be in some pretty extreme temperatures, could be down to negative 30, 20, 30 degrees. So um, we may need this to kind of keep things warm, keep the aircraft going. A lot of camera equipment here. We're going to be kind of documenting the, uh, the journey. And so we've got a lot of batteries for power. Uh, all the things we need to kind of record it. Obviously, Bose headsets here, the best headsets that'll uh, really help us focus. And uh, we've got our engine cover here, which will keep it warm uh, while we're making stops and fueling up. Uh, extra oil. Uh, we've got our wing covers here, so if it does get frosty, we gotta wait. That'll keep the ice kind of off the wings. Over here, we've got some nice flight outfitter uh, bags that are waterproof or water resistant. And those, uh, we're gonna store some of the stuff in there. As we go along, we're gonna need some shelter. So we've got negative 20 degree sleeping bags here. Uh, so these should be, you know, good for the temperatures we're encountering, along with a tent uh, that can keep us sheltered. And we've got some other bivy sacks and things uh, in case of an emergency. Fuel's a little bit few and far between. So we've got these fuel bags. Uh, they weigh almost nothing. And uh, each of these can take about eight gallons uh, of fuel in them. So if we do need to fill up or go take the fuel bag somewhere to pick up some fuel, that'll get us uh, going, help us out. Uh, we're gonna also bring warm clothing, nice winter clothing here. Keep us nice and toasty when we're doing outside ops. And then we've got all kind of different emergency gear as well. So of course, headlamps, we've got some, uh, some different knife equipment here and gloves to keep the fingers warm. Uh, it's gonna be pretty cold out there and touching bare metal is no fun. Fire starter, all the good stuff. We also have a rocket parachute as well uh, in case of an emergency. So we're in pretty good shape here. We do have our bivy sacks here and these all be nice 
in case of snow and things like that and some air mattresses as well so pretty well outfitted to, to withstand the cold and uh, have a great trip so let me interject something important here as we're going through this gear overview video because it bears repeating the carrying of emergency gear to this magnitude may seem like overkill to a lot of people and I might even get some comments or something that talk about how overly cautious I'm being. I would rather be on that side of the argument than the other side of the argument though, considering that Daniel and I are both family men with children and wives. Not planning for emergencies would just be incredibly negligent and we just want to make sure we are safe on this journey. So to drive this point home, I recently faced a situation that reminded me how important it was to keep gear in the plane and it's something that I take a lot more seriously now. So while I was learning to fly on skis, obviously during the winter time, there arose a situation where I was left alone on a remote lake, no one else around, very little emergency gear, although people knew where I was and they were coming right back for me. The full story can be found as a link here on the video or also in the description. You definitely need to go check that out and learn more about the context. But let's just summarize it by saying that things can get real very fast. And especially during the winter time, there are just so many more dangers, obviously hypothermia, things like that. You know, there are definitely dangers during the summertime, but winter just has even more of it. And those that aren't prepared can face a rapidly deteriorating situation. So again, we just don't want Murphy's law. What can go wrong will go wrong to affect us. So we're trying to plan for everything. Now we as pilots, we put a ton of effort into risk mitigation, into the flying that we do. You know, we make sure that we're good with performance numbers, with weather, all of these things. And we need to think more about how we do that while flying in remote areas. And what happens if we go down? What are we going to do to survive? And I'm not just talking about Alaska here. We need to be thinking about this across the board. So this is a lesson for everyone everywhere. All right, so that's kind of my sermon. Back to the hangar. All right, so this actually isn't everything that we're bringing. There's some other uh, things like some clothes from home and some cameras and some hats to hand out to people that we meet along the way. So several other things. We've actually gone through the process of weighing everything already and that's obviously a huge consideration. Uh, we have the weight figured out tomorrow. When we load up in the morning, we're gonna do the balance part of that. So where we load the airplane based on like the passenger seats versus the back of the cargo area. So we actually removed the back seat to give us more room and I'll show you what that looks like now. All right, so stepping in the plane now, you can see that the back seat is removed and um, it looks a little bit wonky right now, but we've got some cargo net to prevent the load from coming up if there were any turbulence. And then we have some tie down straps right here that will prevent the load even more just to make sure that we don't have a load shift of some kind. Obviously that's more important for the balance of the airplane. So uh, down the longitudinal, you know, long way of the airplane front to back. But we just wanna make sure that everything's nice and secure. In this area we'll store some of the things that we use often and some of the food, things like that. We're gonna put that all together tomorrow. That's not necessarily part of this video, but just to kind of show you some of our thoughts on, on how we're preparing the aircraft for all of that load. So I know that was just a brief overview, but I hope you guys enjoyed seeing some of the stuff that we're gonna be taking along on this trip. Make sure to subscribe so you can see all those videos that are coming because this is going to be one huge epic journey and it's gonna be tricky. It's gonna take all of our skills as commercial pilots to get there and a lot of judgment and sound decision making. So follow along. Hope you guys enjoy that process and learn something from it. Again, make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it, and hit that notification bell so that you can get notified when we, we release more videos. And until next time, throttle on.